Hi folks! In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use DaVinci Resolve to do color grading and post-process effects on your Unreal Engine 5 renders. Now, I've been using DaVinci Resolve for years now, and it's my go-to tool for color grading and post-production. It's a powerful and versatile tool that gives you a lot of control over your renders. Let's get started. First of all, we will head over to the edit page, the third one. And here we will import our Unreal Engine 5 render from the media pool. Just make sure that you've activated the media pool and simply drag and drop it onto the timeline, just like this. Now let's switch to the color page. This is where the magic happens. You'll notice the Winter Resolve uses a node-based system. This is incredibly powerful, much like the material editor in Unreal Engine 5. Just think of it as building a visual blueprint for your colors. Each node represents a specific adjustment, and the beauty of this system is that it's non-destructive, and you can simply add a new node by pressing Alt plus S on your keyboard. For example, while my second node is selected, I'm going to increase the contrast, and you can always go back and tweak any node without affecting the original footage. And then we have a timeline here, which we can scroll on our footage, make sure it's activated from here. And let's explore some key tools, color wheels. These are incredibly intuitive tools. And the first one is lift, which adjusts the darkest areas of the image, I mean the shadows. Then we have gamma wheel, which controls the midtones of the image, affecting overall contrast. Gain adjusts the brightest areas of the image, I mean the highlights, and finally offset shifts the overall brightness of the image. And then we have Curve. This tool provides a precise control over color and luminance, and you can create subtle gradients or dramatic shifts in tone with just a few clicks. All right, now let's start with a simple example. I will create a new node and let's label it as contrast. Now let's use the curve tool. I'm gonna go to create an S curve here. This is a classic technique to increase both shadows and highlights, resulting in a more contrasty image. And to be honest, this will give you the best contrast that you're looking for most of the time, so try to use it. Now, to see the impact of this adjustment, I will simply deactivate and activate the node by pressing Ctrl D. This allows you to easily compare the original footage with the adjusted version. In the next step, I'm going to create another node and we'll call it as color grading. And guys, just keep in mind, adding these node labels will make you to be able to work more organized. Now, while the third node is selected, I'm going to decrease the temperature and this will shift the overall color towards cooler tones like more blue. Now let's head over to the color wheels and I'm going to start with the lift. Let's decrease the lift and it will slightly deepen the shadows. And we don't want to go crazy with it. Then we have gamma and I'm going to increase it and it will increase the overall contrast in the midtones. Then let's head over to the gain and I'm going to increase the gain and it will brighten the highlights. And finally, let's shift the offset slightly towards blue and this will add a subtle blue tint to the image. Now let's take a look and see what we've done with this note. So pressing Ctrl D and yeah. We're okay, we're doing good. So let's continue. Now it is time to add some extra magic to our renders. As you can see, we have some ready to use effects right here. And I'm going to search for my most used effects. And the first one is glow. So I'm gonna search for it and it's right here and simply drag it and connect it to the previous nodes and connect this side to the output or you can simply bring the glow and put it right here on the line and it will automatically connect it to the output. 
Now you need to click on the glow node to open its parameters and here's where we can adjust the glow and the first important parameter is the spread which controls how far the glow extends from the bright areas and then we have gain which determines the intensity of glow and then we have gamma and this affects how the glow blends with the surrounding image. In the next step, I want to add some classic film texture to my render. So in this regard, I'm going to search for film grain and simply drag it and connect it to my previous nodes. While my new node is selected, I'm going to set the film grain preset to 35mm 400T. This gives a classic grainy look reminiscent of older film stocks. And then I will adjust the grain intensity slider which controls the strength of the film grain effect. Just start with a low value and gradually increase it until you achieve the desired look. Now let's make a bit more space for our notes and then let's add a subtle vignette to frame our image and draw attention to the center. So in this regard, I will add the vignette to my notes. And here is how I adjust the settings. In the shape section, I will increase the size parameter. This will make the vignette larger and cover a wider area of the image. And then I will decrease the softness parameter and this will make the vignette's edges more defined and less blurry, creating a sharper transition. And finally, I will decrease the blend parameter, which will make the vignette more pronounced. And finally, let's add a subtle halo effect to our render for a dreamy look. So in this regard, I will add the halation. And here is how to adjust the settings. Strength of the halation controls the intensity of the halo effect. Start with a low value and gradually increase it until you achieve the desired look. And then gamma affects how to halo blends with the surrounding render. Higher values make the halo effect more pronounced, while lower value makes it more subtle. Alright, now let's see the final result and select all the nodes and press Ctrl D and Ctrl D to see what we did and look at the difference. We've transformed our Unreal Engine 5 render with just a few simple adjustments in the winter resolve. And remember, this is just one example of how you can use the winter resolve to enhance your renders. Experiment with different settings, try different effects, and find the style that suits your own work. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Unreal Engine 5 tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.